Speaking of farce and satire, we'll get to more of that with your reviews shortly. But some surprising news broke over the last few days. I have to get your thoughts on it. Please do. Thunderbolt Patterson being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. There's the speech we need. If I only had time, because cause I'm full, you understand? I'm, I'm full. I'm full up to here. I, I don't know. I don't know how to begin this <laughs> because how do you begin this? He never worked a day for Vince McMahon or Vince McMahon senior or the WWF. He on a nationwide basis was not, I don't think ever in the top pecking order of, you know, global stars, the Funks, the Briscoes, the uh, whatever. Um, this is, you can't really say it any other way than it, it, he, they're putting him in because he's black and they need to fill that quota. And somebody had this idea is, I mean, isn't that just being honest? That is what I think a cynic would see or say others would Apparently say I am others would say WWE is honoring a trailblazing wrestler who was super over everywhere he went and of course his battles with management opened the doors to wrestlers becoming multi-millionaires I'm sorry and, e and equality all throughout wrestling what I'm sorry I I was gonna raise a flag and and put an asterisk next to uh, over everywhere he was or everywhere he, he went but then you got into to that um no thunderbolt patterson for a period of time was incredibly over in the places that he went because he really only went to the places that he was going to get over and you cannot deny his appeal to the people in Georgia. He had uh, big runs in the Carolinas in the, what, late 60s, early 70s, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, the Sheik used him very well, and he was on top in Detroit for a, a period of time. And the, the key was all of those all those territories, all those areas had heavy African-American populations. Thunderbolt Patterson could talk, especially to his audience. He could talk them in the building because he seemed real with his attitude and the way that he, especially in the early years, toward, toward the end, I think it, it almost became a caricature where he was relying on the, the stuff too much. The, if I only had time. And and what? But it, there was a time where he could be incisive to in in his way with a promo. In the ring, it, I didn't see him personally until the late seventies. But from everybody that ever worked with him that I've talked to, or the impression amongst the boys was it was kind of like Jimmy Valiant, handsome Jimmy Valiant in the 1970s was a dynamic heel, and he took big bumps and backdrops and slingshots in, and he was a, wow, boom, boom, boom. But by the 80s, in his 40s, if you had the Boogie Woogie Man match, then you could have a match with Jimmy because he, he had talked himself incredibly over. But if you didn't have the Boogie Woogie Man match, it was brutal. And if you didn't have the Thunderbolt Patterson match, it was brutal. Because his shit didn't look that fucking good. He had to be over to get away with it. You see what I'm saying? And like the old Steve Austin stomping the mud hole in, in the guy in the corner. And, it, and it, when he came to Tennessee, it didn't translate because... You know, he just spent a brief period of time here, but then it was, I think it was 1978, 79. It, 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 he, you, he hadn't had the weeks and weeks and weeks of a concerted push in his prime, which was what, late 60s through mid 70s. And, and it just, it didn't work in a few places. But the places that it worked, he stayed in, specifically Georgia, where he lived. 
And then the the dressing room scuttlebutt, as they said in those days, was that he got mad whenever they would say Thunderbolt, whenever they'd give him his notice or or didn't have anything else for him in, in Georgia anymore, he'd get mad and either try to run opposition or sue. It wasn't like... I don't think it was just when he was given notice. That's... I don't. I don't know about that. Well, not not when he was when he was given notice, or when they just weren't using him. Because how you know how much can, how long, right? It was time to do something else. But that's what everybody. He would either sue or run opposition because he did both at various points. Well, actually, and I have a lot of the paperwork and the flyers and everything. Him and Jim Wilson would together do stuff in Georgia yes. as opposition, and at least once before the show actually ran. After building it up, even on TV, they hired Thunderbolt back. So Jim Wilson lost Thunderbolt for the show. Yes. Thunderbolt was back working for Georgia Championship Wrestling. Well, and see, that lost Thunderbolt a lot of credibility also because aligning himself with Jim Wilson. Because even if you want to uh, believe the, 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 the reason why the Thunderbolt Patterson was never made world champion or paid on the level of the traveling, you know, national all-stars is because he was black which was his you know his story and he was sticking to it for quite some time jim wilson's story was completely preposterous that they he would have been the nwa world champion if he if he had succumbed to jim barnett's advances people had seen jim wilson jim wilson couldn't work and couldn't talk him in the building and they made him a, a wrestler in Florida, in Georgia, as we've talked about, because he'd been a football player there and had a name there. But he wasn't ready to go anywhere else, and he wasn't even ready to be in Georgia. But his ridiculous claim made, you know, because Thunderbolt aligned with it, eh, you know. And then eh, I've got some of the flyers also. What was it? Thunderbolt's group he was going to run was the IWL International Wrestling League was that it? I think so, yeah. Um what he did was he he knew that he believed he could still draw and this was 19 what 81 82ish. He believed he could still draw his audience in Georgia. But the times had changed, the fans had moved on to all the new stars and at the same time the city auditorium was closed. It was gone. So he didn't really have his fan base in place. And they they put up a stink and actually got a date at the Omni. And it, it, I've got the flyer where they were talking about, I, I can't remember the names, but you can meet such and such a local civil rights leader, right? And he hired every or booked every black wrestler that he could find, whether they'd been in the territory or not. They, a lot of them lived around there whatever and thinking he was going to get his fan base back well the again the fan base that had loved thunderbolt that had been 10 years previous and the city auditorium and they were gone and anybody that wanted to meet the civil rights leaders in person probably didn't want to go to a wrestling match right and they're running a 16,000 seat building and it just it i don't know if it actually came off if it did i'm sure it died from the lineup and the fact that they had no television or anything else let me jump in as you're ripping thunderbolt apart. yes fantastic interview in the sense that whatever he said or didn't say or the way he moved influenced others but also connected in a weird way or connected yes, yes. with people because you watch those interviews they're like favorites amongst people who used to trade tapes because they didn't make they didn't really go anywhere. It was an amazing way to display your charisma, but never actually say anything. Yes. Ever. But you remember that the person was talking. But that's the thing is he did more talking early on until he got over. But those are the things that people got a kick out of. And he began doing a lot more of that and less of the coherent shit in between as well. But. But never let no, he was massively over it. He was a big draw. And did, you know, did he have a big impact on 
the Southern Territories. I think he had a couple of runs in Florida too. I'm pretty sure he did. He might have gone to Texas. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He was actually yes. in Texas. He uh, had a good run there in the early 70s, maybe 71, 72. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. When he he had a great body, and you know, and and also a, a, the weird way of working that when he was younger and he could put everything into it. But I saw him, like I said, in the, you know, in the declining years and he had trailed off and, and most of the time, you know, Ole liked him and, and would book him more often than not. And then he'd get mad at Ole and then, you know, try to run opposition or sue again. So really his run as a, as a top main event guy in the wrestling business was probably curtailed earlier than it would have been. <laughs> just by the fact that he either ran opposition or sued and got, you know, and people didn't want to fucking deal with that. So especially if after, he didn't want to leave Georgia, if that's where he wanted to yeah, stay and work. And he didn't want to leave Georgia. He, and he, again, you know, a lot of the guys, it came off to them. I didn't fucking spend hardly any time around him, but it came off to a lot of the guys like he wanted Georgia wrestling to be booked around him, you know, and, and he'll just be the guy and the time had passed. And, but by 85, you know, with Ole, that was pretty much his last last run, right? Timeline-wise, because he was still there when they made when Crocky got the time slot, because that's when they finished up the thing with the Anderson brothers and Thunderbolt where Ole yes. turned on him. Were you there? Did you guys overlap at all? I think we At that yeah. time, not in 1990, but then. No, I, th I think we... Oh, I forgot about Ole brought him back in 1990 for a minute, didn't he? He was a manager. That was there the famous... That's right. I'll see if I can pull up the promo. Hold on. Okay, but I'll answer your other question. Yes, I think he was still at some of the shows, I, you know, uh, when we were coming in as he was going out, I believe, if I remember. But then again, I'd forgotten about the thing in 1990 uh, where Ole booked him to come in because, once again, he had the reputation of being able to talk. But that was predicated on that he had, as a young man, and when the, he had a push, was on weekly television, being able to do his shit week after week and be in the ring. And get and so when you bring him back to an audience that had never seen him, and at that point he's trying to talk, it didn't translate, if that makes any sense. Well, let's go to this, and there's actually another one here I'm tempted to click. It says the best of Thunderbolt Patterson promos. <laughs> I'm dying to see what that is, but here is... A video on YouTube, it's Thunderbolt Patterson makes threats, I think. But here's from 1990, talking about Ole Anderson. You tell me what you think. Championship wrestling gave me the opportunity again to keep my eyeballs on the Ole. You have ruined folks' lives. Not talking about how you dealt with mine in the past, but in the recently. You have been getting on everybody's case. So this Sunday, if you move, if you move, I am going, if you move, this Sunday, it's time to, ooh, I'm so full, I'm full up there here. <laughs> Same old. But they say it's going to be a change. There will be a change. History has already been made. <laughs> somebody call him. somebody only if you move, <laughs> Just move. Well, there, it is. there you go <laughs> and again i don't know truthfully whether thunderbolt stole you better call somebody from ernie or ernie stole it from thunderbolt because they were in the same generation there when Thunderbolt would have been starting to get over and Ernie would have been starting to be a, a big heel, but that was basically it. You better call somebody. Let your mama know. I am looking forward to this speech like you couldn't believe. Well, that's because how old is Thunderbolt now? He's got to be 80, right? In that range, I would One think. Would, well, he was... Again, he I don't know when he debuted, don't know that much about his early life, but he was he started in the mid to late sixties and had a heck of a body, wasn't no 82. young teenager. Eighty two years. Oh my God. But yes, it that's the thing, and that's what I'm wondering about. The appeal of Thunderbolt lasted 
longer than the actual ability of Thunderbolt. When he was in that in that pocket that we talked about, in those territories that he was massively over in, and he was young and he was doing it, but it drooped off, and then, except for Ole Anderson, nobody would book him after 1983, and and it was it was it had a hard time translating even 30 years ago. So I don't know what we're going to get now, but have we ever seen him try to be normal on television? Is there a normal Thunderbolt? I think we see the normal Thunderbolt that that is his normal. Well, it'll, it'll be interesting. What, uh, I wonder if they're going to have a time clock on, on guys again this year. The, I don't think he, there's any time clock that could stop T-Bolt. I he, mean, if he's got something to say it, 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 but if he only had time, well, if they tell him you got time, I don't know what he might say. That, that, that was it. For everybody who don't know what we're talking about, also, just real briefly, that was the fucking rib, and I've told it before. They told Thunderbolt, Ole told him, said, go out there at the end of the Georgia show on Saturday night on TBS, plug Carrollton, Georgia. We're going to be in Carrollton tonight, right? Just say the name of the town and make sure you mention we're going to be there tonight. We'll draw a big house. We don't talk about it. It never draws. So at the end of the thing, at the end of the interview, the last 20 or 30 seconds of the show, Thunderbolt said, and let me tell you this. And he made his faces and he wrenched his hands up and he screwed his face up and he turned his neck and he said, if I only had time. And then they went off the air. Oh, yes, I'll be in Carrollton tonight. That's it. <laughs> hey, uh, before we wrap this up, there's a video here. I'm curious to hear this. This must be 79 or 80 Georgia. Ernie Ladd trashes Thunderbolt Patterson. Oh, my God. Let's hear this. We always love Ernie Ladd on this show. Let's hear some Ernie Ladd. Comments and Mr. Ladd. Uh... <laughs> Did you see how black and blue that egg sucking dog was today? You see his head busted over in his back end, all beat up and bruised up. Looked like he had been in a hatchet fight and everybody had a hatchet but him. But I can assure you one thing, I know he's stupid and very low. He's going to the bottom of the barrel to get old Thunderbolt out of the barrel. A yuck, 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 a yuck, 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 a yuck, 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 a yuck, yuck, yuck. Ain't nobody going to do this. And I ain't nobody going to do that. Well, you going to suck eggs like old eggs like a dog, Thundermouth. I guarantee you bring your carcass back to your Thundermouth, somebody's going to hurt you. You know what they say about your kind and my kind? We can't stand one another, Thundermouth. And Thundermouth, you get out of here before I get in here because you are scared of me. And you better get out of here again because I'll hurt you for the rest of your life. You'll be crippled in the head. Sure and in the hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. We don't want no secrets out. We don't want no secrets out because we have a little necktie party for that egg-sucking dog. And I feel sorry for you, Thundermouth, for being such a big fool. To be a part of something that's going to get you hurt. Let me ask you a question. Have Don't you, you, hey, hey, you're not in this, dog. Hey, look, we're not revealing nothing. You direct all your information to me. And get that camera. Don't be trying to figure out who this gentleman is. All I know is a fine gentleman. And he gets the job done. He won't turn his back on you. He won't be like the egg sucking dog. Lay down. Hey, hey, you camera people, don't, don't be doing it. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? All right, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the big cat, honey lad. Well, welcome to the Hall of Fame Thundermouth Patterson. <laughs>